this is an exciting one, for me at least, I really don't know about uh, anybody else, but I have been longboarding, skateboarding since 2008, and I have cleaned so, 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 so many bearings, and I'm a constant advocate of just how relaxing longboarding can be, as well as longboard maintenance. So, in this video, I want to show you exactly how I clean longboard bearings, because there is a lot of bad bad, bad information out there. Um, so, how do we start this? How about, here, take a look at this. Take a look. Take a look, take a listen. Take a look and take a listen. You will relax and enjoy to this fun and informative ASMR cleaning video. Okay, 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 Eyes back here. Let's... Actually, no. <laughs> Eyes back here. I'm gonna make use of this camera angle as much as physically possible. Step one, wheel bearing spins, but you can hear it's a little bit noisy. You can hear a little bit of the rocks scratching, but it's also skipping a little bit. That's a good indicator that there's probably quite a lot of dirt inside there. So once you get the axle nut off right there, Put that to the side, and there are many, many ways to get longboard bearings off, skateboard bearings off. The most common way is to simply use the axle itself to pry the bearing off. A lot of people will tell you why that is a bad thing. These kind of bearings are specifically designed for rotational forces and not necessarily prying forces. So you can imagine these delicate ball bearings being pressed against the side and squished and squashed. That being said, I have longboard bearings that have lasted many, many, many years. And the oldest one's probably four years before I throw them out or lose them. And uh, this method, when done gently enough, seems to do the trick. So you just grab it, put just the edge, just one bearing, because there are two bearings in each wheel. So you put it in there and you just start to wiggle. Just wiggle and wiggle. And you're just, there you go. So that little prying motion gets one bearing off. We can put that to the side. And if this was a smaller wheel, I'd slap it back on and punch the other bearing through, but this is a very big and offset wheel. And so, all we can do is pry the other one off, which wasn't that difficult. So, let's make this a little bit more comfortable. I can put this to the side, because we're mainly going to be looking at these. Don't mind me, I am a complete and utter professional. So, we have two bearings, and right now they are covered in dirt. So what I like to use is, uh, this would be referred to as a shop towel. It's essentially a paper towel that uh, doesn't break apart, doesn't leave uh, too much material behind. 
So you can take it and just clean it off. Just clean off like that. Like that. Get a little bit of the debris off. Good. Good. So let's put that to the side because we're going to be using it a lot. So now that we have the bearing decently clean, we need a way to access it. And to do that, I use this container. It has three very, very special ingredients. It has a, uh, why did I forget the name of this? Clothespin? Something pin. Um, then we have a simple sewing needle on the bottom. Oh, here's an, actually four tanks. Uh, here's a, a washer. And the fourth one is a piece of hair. That one usually doesn't come in your kit, but if you buy from us, you never know what you're going to get. So, let's get the sewing needle out. Pretty much you want as delicate and fine point um, of a device as you can get to pry off this shield. This is an outer shield that is protecting the bearing from moisture, from water, from sand, from dirt, from everything. Some gets by, and if it didn't, then it wouldn't be able to spin. So, what I like to do is grab the outside. I've seen quite a few people grab from the inside, but that's what's supposed to be running along the spinning bearing, while the outside just stays stationary and does absolutely nothing. So, I like to pry from the outside. It's a little bit more difficult, but if you really just go onto the edge, lift it up, it's already halfway up, and just work your way through. I got a shaky hand osis. Then you'll reveal once again. That's actually at that an angle too. I'm trying out a different camera up front here. That's a little Nikon. Not many people you not, not many people use Nikons, but I like Nikon now. Because I've never used it before either. <laughs> um, so as you can see, a little cheeky ball bearing. And in here you have an outer race, an inner race. You have one, two, three, four, five, six balls inside of this bearing. And then you have, um, you have, what's it called, rollers, guides. You essentially have this plastic on the inside that keeps the balls in each specific pocket. So, um, I didn't plan for this. Although I was thinking about it. You see how this one doesn't have a collar? This actually works out really well. <laughs> I think there's only two bearings on here that still have a collar because I replaced them recently from my bargain bin of parts. And the odds of me choosing this were pretty low. But I knew it was going to happen. And it's perfect anyway. Because we can learn. You cannot get the plastic inner guide off if it has a collar on it. So what you need to do is you need to remove the collar somehow. I found the best, best way to do that is with a needle nose plier. So I have these really big ones here, but essentially this is like very, very light aluminum. And you just put some kind of pry on it until it lets loose. Let me loose. And I'm trying to go extra gentle as to not make any terrible and awful noises. So, collar comes off just like that. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you love it? Can you dig it? Enjoy it. So, collar comes off, and now we're once again left with a workable bearing with an accessible outer race. To clean this bearing, we're going to completely and utterly disassemble it. 
So to disassemble the bearing, what I like to do is get something like this. This is a clothespin. I've told you that before, but I'm just making sure you're paying attention. There are going to be questions at the end of this lesson. And we are going to use it to press out the inner plastic runner. I think I've called it seven different things by now. But what you want to do is you want to get it in between two of the balls. How do I show this to you? There you go. There you go, boss. I got you. Let's see. Uh, three, two, one, go. So you want to get it in between two of the balls and just press. And you can go between a different one and press. And it's just a matter of working it out. Truthfully, it's a little bit more difficult to film, but we get it done either way. So we get welcomed with the plastic bit and all the, <laughs> and all the bearings. There are all the ball bearings, I should say, are still in there. To get them out, you can spin it a little bit, you can tap it, you can tap it, you can tap it. Um, but once again, I just use the pen, push all the balls to one side. And once they're all to one side, you can just grab and push. And just like that, it all falls apart to its individual pieces. So, the reason I like to do this is because you can really, really get a deep, deep clean where these bearings are essentially brand new. If you've seen or done any bearing cleaning, you'll know that nobody in the history of the internet ever disassembles the bearing completely, they just spray it with a little bit of alcohol, and they clean it, maybe they put some oil on it. Um, but I'd like to flex that I didn't see this anywhere, I just kind of did it. And I've been doing it for years, and it works really well. So, we got all six of the balls out, we have the outer, inner race, and then the guide here. So. To clean it, you may be wondering, how are we going to go about cleaning this item? Well, I'm glad you asked. I personally... Uh, should I put this here? Is that risky? If I spill this on my microphones, I'll cry. Okay. Let's leave this here. So, I like to use simple soap and water. I like to use Dawn dish soap, put a little bit in there, and you're good to go. Now, you can use um, brake parts cleaner. That was actually my first guess. Just want to make sure it is not chlorinated because that can damage the plastic as well as other things. Uh, you can also use acetone. You can use a high percentage of alcohol. Um, but I like to use soap and water because it's simple, it's nice, it doesn't really leave any residue, and uh, these are ceramic ball bearings, so you don't have to worry about rust, but even then, if you're worried about the outer race or inner race getting rusted, we are going to be oiling these bearings immediately after cleaning them. So, uh, to clean them really, really good, I use a little toothbrush. This one's really fine, it's really soft. And I just get a little bit wet in the soap. Clean this off because it is actually pretty dirty. I use this to clean various things around the house. Let's get that all clean. Put this to the side. And actually give it a little bit more soap. Just on here. Because we're really trying to get rid of the oily residue that was left over on the bearing. I grab a piece. This one will probably be the most fun. This is the plastic bit. You can see all these grooves where dirt has been hiding and hanging out. And we can give it a really nice scrub now. 
to get all of that dirt to loosen up and we can get a really, really clean surface. Just like that. Can brush it, dip it in a few times, dip, 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 dip. Typically I'd rinse this under the tap after, but once again, we're doing this more for the show than for the actual clean. Clean, clean, clean. Dip it in the water. Dip, 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 dip. Let all the particles fall to the bottom. And then let the water just wash off the soap. Now we have the outer race. I'm going to dip that in the water as well. And this one also is really important to clean well. It seems simple, but because some of them have pretty deep grooves, you, uh, you really got to do a half decent job scrubbing away. Soap off, get all the soap off. Now, with the ball bearings, typically I'd have like a, a scrub pad. That way you can work with them and not worry about them falling in the water. Especially if you're doing this over a sink. You want to make sure you're not going to drop these in the water, but I'm just getting the oil off and cleaning the dirt, so I'll just dip each individual bearing in like that. Man, you know what? I'm really cheesed that I didn't put the bowl of water here. I know it's risky, but we can play it smart. <laughs> Just gonna look a lot better, sound a lot better. Dip, 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 dip and put that to the side. So that's two ball bearings cleaned. Really, I think the magic comes from drying them. I used to use a hair dryer to dry all of my ball bearings after I cleaned them. And one, I was damaging the plastic that thing would get toasty, toasty hot. And two, you would accelerate any rusting process. As soon as you accelerate drying, pretty much just give it time. Oh, no, I'm, I'm wording that really wrong. But you want to wipe this thing dry. If you blow dry it, it'll rust. It'll rust. So there you go. We cleaned every single ball bearing. Successfully, did not spill the water yet. It could still happen. It could still happen. So, I like to get a second clean towel. You can call it wasteful, but we are reusing a bearing, so that's pretty nice. And you really just want to clean it really, really good. You want to make sure it's dry. Right now, we're wiping off. Any excess oil that was left on there, we're also getting off the soap, getting off the soap. You can roll up the fabric a little bit, the cloth, put on the inside, clean the inside, put that to the side. I'm going to clean off the plastic bit, make sure it dries real nice, <laughs> blow on it. Make sure all that water got out. It's got all these crevices. And water might like to hide in there. Let's get this. This one's easy, but you always get the dirtiest paper after. Clean that. Good. And now we can get all the ball bearings. That's weird. I wish there was a better name for this. Paris ceramic balls. Beak. 
these are actually called big balls. Um, probably for a fun reason, because that's funny. Um, but also because they are larger than typical ball bearings. The company I got these from are called Seismic Skate. And they got seven ball and six ball. And off the top of my head, I don't want to say they're slogan poorly. But I believe the six ball is stronger because there's less ball spinning. It like spins faster. Once again, I definitely wouldn't quote me on that. So, now's the fun part. Many, many people, and I'm talking to Jeremy specifically, will not reapply lubricant to the bearings. There's one specific skater who likes to use Windex to clean his bearings, and then he runs them dry. And even better, he uses metal ball bearings. So, as you know, like surfaces have increased friction. So, if I rub a piece of steel against a piece of cloth or on some oil, it will simply slide. But if you rub two pieces of steel together, they kind of like to bind. There's a, a high friction force there. And then when the steel warms up because you're skateboarding down a hill, it expands. You get even more friction. And I'm willing to bet that quite a few people out there who haven't greased their ball bearings have locked up their bearings, completely burnt them up, and maybe even face planet. So, I am here to make sure that does not happen. Listen here. I just bought some really, really overpriced garbage um, bearing lubricant. It's called Ionic Flux, inspired by the impossible. Um, it's a molecular bearing lube. And their website is the biggest joke I've ever seen in my life. But why don't I try it out? You can use this stuff. Lost the label, but it's Bronson's Speed Co. That's another type of lubricant. Uh, you can use white lithium grease. You can use engine oil. You can use a bunch of stuff. To lubricate your bearings. Essentially anything that's oily, anything that's going to resist water and provide lubrication is what you're looking for. Do not use WD-40 because it is not a lubricant, it is a water displacer. It will dry out and you will have no lubricant. So for this, I did want to test and see if this stuff is worth anything they say online. So Let's use this piece, put it back here, and just take all of our components. Back on here, um, just to talk about it a little bit more, I used a 0W16 engine oil for the longest time to lube my bearings, and I still do once in a while when I just feel like switching it up. Um, it works just as well as skateboard bearing lube. Um, it's just a little bit more messy if you put too much. It likes to roll out of the races and out. This kind of stuff typically uh, sticks a little bit better to the metal. But my thought process is, if it is good enough for 10,000 miles on a hot engine, it's good enough for a little skateboard bearing. So... Let's take this stuff and take a look at it. I'm gonna be overly critical, so don't don't judge me too much. It smells exactly like bone speed cream. Exactly like bone speed cream. Um, and it has these black dots all over. I wonder if you can see that. Here, I'll show you up close. 
has these black specks everywhere. I don't know how great that is. Oh, let me change the setting really quick. <laughs> I put this thing with you. Okay. So I can't. Okay, great. <laughs> so, moving on. What I like to do is lubricate everything before you put it together. So, I'll put lube. The, what the frank? My little thing fell off. I'll put lube on each ball bearing individually. Do, 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 do. I'll put one drop on the inner race. And I'll put one drop on the outer race. That's great. And you can just let it roll around. Yeah, there's definitely black specks all over this. On the website, they were saying a lot about a ceramic compound that will ride and fill in any imperfections in the bearing. Once again, it all sounds like a bunch of hoo-ha to me. But, yeah, you just want to get the oil lightly covered on everything. You don't want it to fill too much or oversaturate. If you fill the bearing with too much oil, you're essentially just adding fluid resistance. So the bearing's trying to spin, and the fluid's slowing it down. So, we have everything cleaned, everything dried, and everything lubricated. And now we just need to get it back together. I promise you it seems more daunting than it actually is. This is actually really nice. It feels good. <laughs> um, what I like to do is I like to take the plastic guide. Damn, I knew that I knew that I knew the name for that and I lost it. Uh, I like to take it and install it backwards into the outer race. It just clicks into place like that. And doing that allows me to there you go. Allows me to essentially ease, easily reinstall the balls. So I'm gonna do my best to show you what I'm doing here. But you see how with one hand I can quite simply hold the bearing and the inner and outer race more or less in the position that it's got to be. You just want this to stick out from the top just a hair, just a little bit. And you can start dropping each ball bearing inside. Don't think about it too much. There. And you want to start from the bottom and just keep adding bearing or the balls inside. Then I put another one in between. So I'm always aiming for the middle and pushing the other balls out of the way. Once again, placing it right on the outside like that and just pushing it in. You want to keep adjusting the inner race. You want to make sure that it, it stays where it's supposed to. Although the more balls you get in, the more uh, it likes to stay in the correct place. That one was a little bit trickier. Sometimes with these six balls, they don't want to move out of the way too easily. And you end up having to start from another side, but there you go. All of them are inside. You can wiggle the inner race. But what you want to do immediately is put one of the balls up towards the top. Just so it doesn't fall apart. So you want to space the bearing out a little bit. Now that's spaced out. We can take this and poke the guide out. And nice and slowly, we just want to move each ball into the position it's supposed to be. It's a little star pattern. And just make sure that they're spaced out evenly. Now you want to take that plastic piece and install it from the bottom. I shifted one of the balls over, not a problem. Push it like that. 
Uh, actually, I, I pretty pretty much foobarred this thing. <laughs> Let's shift, shift, shift. I apologize that you can't see this, but you can just use your imagination. Um, picture me fumbling, um, being confused, not knowing what year it is, um, asking for help, um, wishing somebody would would do this for me. <laughs> there you go. So you just press the race back in and we have a spinning happy, 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 happy ball bearing. Now, it's all together. It's spinning. I can hear a little bit of like a rattle in there. I don't love it. These are legitimately probably three plus years old. And I do about, uh, I don't want to oversay it, but like, like it's 300 kilometers a, a year, sometimes more, sometimes less. So they get a little, a lot of wear and tear actually. Now, in the spirit of this being a video and it already being over 30 minutes long, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll show you a few little fun things. Maybe we'll talk about it for a second, actually. <laughs> I, I got too excited there. Um, I'm really excited to try out this lube. Um, I spoke really poorly of it, but um, I don't know. It seems actually pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, let's put the little shield back on. So some people don't put the shield back on, specifically skaters, because they don't really care about fast or quick bearings. Me, I didn't really talk about it too much, but I longboard, I don't skateboard anymore. Um, I have a video I posted a couple years back about my longboards, and if you want, you can watch that and it'll explain a little bit more info. But the most important thing for me that I've noticed is yes, technically speaking, for ceramic ball bearings, you legally speaking do not need to put oil. I know I've been saying put oil this whole time because one ceramic, other pieces metal, you don't have to worry about it as much. Um, when you do put oil or lubricant on the bearing, it one aids in heating and cooling. It helps reduce friction so the bearing will last longer but the most important most important part for me is it greatly greatly reduces the risk of a bearing locking up um, it doesn't happen often it should happen never and that is why we put lubricant on there so with that being said I always put on the shields as well because I can't imagine a piece of sand or dirt falling in here while I'm going 50 kilometers per hour, 60 kilometers per hour, and locking up on me. That would not be a good experience. So I put these shields on, but I compromise a little bit. I only put the shields on on the outside. Many, many bearings come with shields on the inside, but since both bearings are sandwiched in the wheel, like this, they're sandwiched like that, and there's urethane, polyurethane all around the outside, there's nothing going towards the inside, so it's kind of overkill to uh, put shields on the inside as well, but, 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 there you go, I hope you enjoyed a few of the little tips and tricks I shared here, um, little things like using the sewing needle to get the shield off or popping out the plastic in a runner so that you can thoroughly clean all the dirt out of the bearing stuff like that um to put the bearings back into the wheel what i like to do you just lightly put them in 
and these uh, these bearings have built-in spacers both on the inside and outside so you don't need spacers but if your bearings don't have spacers please use them um, you want to be able to tighten down your axle nut all the way until the maximum so that um, it works well man I could talk about this all day um, maybe I'll make another video talking about other stuff on longboards but it is really really late and this took me longer to do than I thought um, you can imagine if it took 40 minutes to do one bearing 40 minutes times two four six eight would be a lot of time uh, it doesn't take that long to clean your bearings so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this little different video a little instructional video on how to clean longboard bearings use that information wisely do not uh, hold me liable for any mistakes and I wish you adieu a pleasant night a good rest and I shall see you next time good night good night good night good night